Hi everyone, my name is Scott Legere Horn, and this is The Short Call. Let's make learning music a little bit easier. In today's video, I want to guide you through my process of listening to a piece of music for the first time in preparation for a rehearsal, an audition, or even just for fun. Yes, classical musicians are allowed to listen to music for fun. Whether it's a solo piece, a chamber work, or a grand symphony, you're going to want to have a thorough understanding of the music before the first rehearsal. This includes knowing how the music sounds, understanding its historical context, and being familiar with both the score and your own part. The first thing you're going to want to do is a little bit obvious, but you should, of course, find a high-quality recording of the work you're learning and listen to the piece the entire way through. But here's the catch. Listen to the entire work without looking at the score or your part. I think this is really important for a first listen of the piece because I want to have as similar an experience as my audience does when they hear the piece for the first time. No preconceived notions, no looking ahead in the score, just me, the music, and how it makes me feel. There are so many good places to find high quality recordings. Spotify and Apple Music have both really broadened their classical music offerings over the past few years. Primephonic and Idagio are newer classical music specific streaming platforms, and most lesser known works that are outside of the standard repertoire can be found on the Naxos label. The Berlin Philharmonic offers an impressive archive of their live performances, and more and more orchestras are beginning to stream their archival performances as well since the start of the pandemic. Even YouTube now has a wealth of of legally dubious but great recordings by great orchestras and soloists. Now that you've heard the piece all the way through, it's time to open up wikipedia.org, I mean the uh, New Groves Dictionary for Classical Music and Musicians, and do some research. Honestly, you don't need to go crazy researching every single piece you're going to perform, but you should know the date the piece was composed, what else was going on in the world around that time, and some general program notes about the piece. Just Google the piece and you'll be fine. Next, you're going to want to listen to the piece all the way through again, but this time you're going to follow along with the score. Most scores for music in the public domain can be found on imslp.org, and some contemporary scores can be found on sites like issue.com and the New York Philharmonic Digital Archive. When you're listening with the score, your main goal is to find out how the composer structured and built the music to make you feel the way that you did on your first listen. You're basically looking at the blueprints of the music and finding out how it was made. And the last listen you're going to do is while following along with your own part. I know, I know, it can be tempting to do this step first, especially if you're on a time crunch. But unless what you're playing is a true unaccompanied solo, you're just one part of a larger whole. Composers didn't write excerpts or individual parts, they wrote entire pieces, and it's incumbent upon you to understand how your role functions within the larger work. And besides, what's not to love about listening to more great music? If you found this video helpful, give it a like and follow Scott Legere Horn for more tips and tricks to make your life playing music a little bit easier. Happy practicing.